Hello, you're watching Telecom TV. I'm Martin Warwick. We're here at Mobile World Congress 2016 in Barcelona in Spain. And I'm talking with Julian Derma, who is experienced developer at Swisscom. Julian, welcome. Thank Thanks you. for talking to us. First question, really, intriguing job title. What's an experienced developer? <laughs> Actually, the main role is to um, uh, consider what type of service the customer needs, what's the customer um, doing with that service and then um, being an interface between the actual customer and, and the experience he has with that service and obviously the engineering, how we resolve um, the demands of the customer. And that's Very what clear, I now I understand, thank okay. <laughs> you. Okay, now you're demonstrating uh, your VCPE solution at Mobile World Congress and I've noticed that it's getting quite a lot of attention, a lot of people are hanging around talking about it, so let's begin with this. What's the background to Swisscom's reasons and objectives for beginning the tr this transformation into the next generation network? Um, okay, in, in quite in general, we are um, transforming all our products from a TDM basis to an IP basis yep. um, because we have to phase out our TDM infrastructure and the corresponding BSS stack by end of 2017. So there was an opportunity window where we had one, exi one existing service um, that had to be transformed anyways, um, which was a service that was targeting multi-site SME customers. And at that time, <coughs> we realized that um, we have to consult the industry what would probably be a good way and, and actually a sustainable technology to develop the new service based on. And that was actually the time we got engaged with HPE <coughs> about a year ago. Thank you very much. Now, Back to virtual CPE. Is that deployed, and how is it going? Have you, what have you seen in you know in, in real life things like in terms of reduction of service deployment times and that kind of thing? Um, actually, yes, it is live since this week. Actually, <laughs> um, yeah. but we, are, we have to differentiate that a little bit. We are live, and we are currently working on onboarding friendly customers, but we are not fully live to the public. Not basically because of the technology, mainly because of we are changing a lot of um, components of the service. For example, with the existing service, there's absolutely no self-care. So every service configuration or site onboarding, uh, maybe any interaction with the service has to happen through Swisscom. Right. Um, we got strong indication from the customers that this is not really state of the art anymore. And um, so the new service is completely based on self-care. So in this case, we wanted to make sure that um, if we're going live, we can um, explain the right things to the customer, we can make sure that they're also um, find their way through that self-care portal, which is very important because they rely on that network. So if there was something would go wrong, obviously they would have a service impact, which, which could be very bad. So that's why we are going carefully step by step out of the market. But the technical deployment is live and yes, you can onboard as a customer. What about the process of transformation itself? You're underway with it. You've got a deadline for next year, yeah. 2017. Um, Moving on from virtual CPE, what other areas is Swisscom in the act of transforming right now? Um, it's mainly networking part. We have another uh, project that is um, mainly focusing on the mobile network. Yep. Um, these are actually the two areas, but <clears throat> I think we are now working on extending that. We, we have put a base, um, even internally for us, ourselves, we could prove that it's possible. We could show that there is also a business case that, that works out. And now um, we see certain areas where we could use this basis um, to extend our service portfolio. For instance, security services is, is, a, is a good area where uh, typically you rely on, on, on strong hardware on-prem and with the virtualization you can centralize it and you can scale it more efficient. And that even makes it quite attractive for us but also for our customers um, <coughs> to go for such a solution. And so there in general for all these value add services we see the transformation coming up as well. The transformation process is obviously technology based, yep. otherwise you wouldn't be transforming. And uh, that's one side of it. You briefly mentioned business case there. How are the business cases developing as far as your, your customers are concerned? Do they, do they see the business value? Yes, they, they see the business value. Um, <clears throat> depending on the area, more obvious or less obvious, um, the most obvious change is the self-care, right? Right now they can experience the service, they see what the service does, uh, how how it goes with the service actually. But the second part are also financial impacts, right? If you centralize, um, you don't need distributed hardware, for example, to fulfill a service. Um, you don't need logistics to, to, to um, send the, the, the box to, to the site. And this obviously fastened up the fulfillment processes sure. heavily. 
And, and that is also the potential business value that the customer sees because for them, the dynamic is much higher in the market today as it was, let's say, 10 years ago. So for them, it's a real business value if they can boot up the site or shut it down very quick. Whereas today, it took about 30 days to, to deploy a new site, sure. right? And, and for them, that is a real value that we can uh, keep up with their business speed very, very close. Thank you. So Swisscom's creating these virtual functions, but obviously in the network there are still legacy functions there, yeah. they're bound to be. How do you manage that, the two things together, as far as the OSS side of things is concerned? <coughs> Actually, um, we decided, that was more kind of a strategic decision, we decided to not touch the core network, because um, obviously if you have millions of customers on the network, you are more than happy that you have more than two eyes looking after a change. Um, so what we decided is to go for an overlay solution, which is actually allowing us to leverage all the assets that we have in the core network. For instance, uh, we don't have to change the CP just because of the Witcher CP solution. We simply switch the mode of the CP that's already there. Right. Um, <coughs> and on the other side, we still rely on our own network. So we, there's no need in being throughput efficient, for example. We can easily provide the functions out of the cloud, uh, which leads us to pull back all the traffic. Um, and there you can, quite efficiently combine, uh, combine these two worlds. You can gain from, from flexibility and agility by bypassing your core network, but you can also leverage the assets by combining it with the core asset and or, or the core network. And from a BSS perspective, it's also it's similar. We, we tried to, um, or we, dedicate, we developed a dedicated BSS stack just for the virtualized services to be able to um, keep up with these fast fulfillment times, for example, instantiating a new uh, feature in two minutes rather than five business days. Um, <clears throat> but other assets like a billing system or a CRM is something you want to leverage off the regular uh, BSS stack, right? And there, it's kind of a bar paradox and you try to stay as away as most as possible, but also as close as possible. And we, we, we tackled that by having dedicated fulfillment stacks for virtualized services and for the regular services, but they're very, very close stick together. Okay, thank you. You briefly mentioned Hewlett Packard Enterprise a while ago. Mm -hmm. um, how did you select the vendor or vendors with the right technical capabilities for the network transformation that's <coughs> underway? What were your criteria? <laughs> that's actually a good question. Because <laughs> we always talk about the transformation, but there are actually, I think, two transformations happen at the same time. One is the virtualization, but another one is the way we work with vendors together. Yeah. In regard of openness, but also in regard of um, working together very, very close. When we were consulting the industry for this specific use case, we did not um, proceed like we did during the past 10 years. We did not write a thousand business requirements, send them to the suppliers and, and, and choose the cheapest one, which is actually quite simple to compare. Absolutely. And we formulated the business case. We, we consulted the industry and it's, um, HPE just showed actually um, a lot of strength in understanding the business case, understanding the um, KPIs we want to achieve and had a good concept presented to us how we could achieve these values. And the second component was, since we had a very tough time frame, we had to be ready by end of last year actually, um, <coughs> HPE could show upfront that they're able to allocate uh, dedicated resources that they send to our prem that work with our team, um, which let them actually sleep right next to each other more or less <laughs> uh, and working together very, very close. Because if you develop something in an agile mode, it doesn't work that I send you a requirement and I get feedback after two days. You yeah. actually need the feedback instantly. Yeah. And, and there just HPE showed um, uh, most of, or the, the best strengths out of the partners that we consulted. And that's why we choose HPE as a partner. Thank you. The focus on network functions, virtualization, NFV has been intense over the past two, two and a half years. Yeah. It came from nowhere seemingly and then suddenly it's everywhere. And it's a technology which is going to and is beginning to profoundly change the world's networks. Operational challenges we've talked about to some extent. There are also cultural challenges in many in many chunk organizations. And then there's the engineering side of it as well, which is always difficult, complex, time consuming. How long do you think it will be before we actually see NF deployments really taking off? I think we'll we'll need another three years really because for us the opportunity window really was that there was a new development needed for an existing service. Yeah. Um, I mean it w we have to admit that there is a significant capex investment needed to move towards virtualization and that um, significant invest only makes sense if you really have to invest. 
um, if it's just to, to make a park or just to, let's say, get used to the technology, then I think the costs are simply too high. And typically we have a life cycle in, in these core network components that are about three years or up to 10 years, depending on, on, on several components. Yep. And I think we need another three years till we see it really go, go mass market actually um, with the virtualization. But it is a transformation that is not, it's, in fact, it's more than generational. It is a complete change from what went before. Yep. I mean, it's this thing, this only happens rarely, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a very good example in, in the uh, physical world. Um, <coughs> checking the service availability is just look for the cable yeah. and check whether it's plugged in and the light is green, right? Yep. Try to do that in a virtualized <laughs> environment. You're rarely going to find cables. Yeah. And, and that is just changing the networking world upside down, which is actually quite interesting for us. I mean, um, when I left school, everybody was, oh, you're going into the network. Are you crazy? I mean, it's boring. Do web technology. And they're all coming back because it's now very exciting and, and, and a lot of things. And you can change a lot of things by, by working hard, actually, uh, mostly together, because doing it alone it's hard to change the world, but having strong, strong partners and having also a strong team with the right capabilities is also very exciting because they start to drive themselves actually and, and that, that's when typically good things happen and, and, and get created. Very interesting. Julian Dermot, thank you very much indeed. You're welcome. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you.